Ingrid, his first tweet, why is it taking them so long? Well, I think Harry really watches what other people tweet rather than tweeting himself. It's not exactly a very selective secret form of contacting your friends. So I think that um, the last thing Harry wants to do is anyone to know what he's doing or where he is. Although we've heard he might have a private Twitter account, one I'm under sure a he's... pseudonym, so he can you know, converse with his friends and follow what they're doing. I'm sure he does, but he probably uses WhatsApp or, or something else. Um, I know that he reads all the tweets that are written about him, though. Really? Yeah, I mean, and, and he does he also... like what he reads? No, he does not like what he reads. He, he is very, very, very critical of the media and what they say about him, and they're terrible inaccuracy. <laughs> the thing is, Luke, they are public figures. Are they a bit behind the times of this? I mean, even the Pope has a Twitter feed these days. Exactly. I mean, what's taken them so, so long? The Pope's been on Twitter for, for over a year. I think something Twitter likes to boast that over 100 world leaders are on Twitter. So you have to wonder where the royal family have, have been, really. Uh, so they're definitely behind the times. It makes perfect sense that they should be more active on social media. Perhaps it's because William, Harry, Kate, they're a bit too high profile for it. Whereas you see the perhaps more minor royals, Prince Andrew, for example, they're already on it. They love, I think he's got something like 40 odd thousand uh, followers. And this is the selfie I think he took to launch his own Twitter feed. Not the greatest of photos, <laughs> gives him a rather large head there, but at least he's on there, Luke. They, they should all be on there, really, let's face it. I mean, this is what people expect from celebrities now, and I think the royal family are no different. So the royal family have a very kind of controlled public image. Uh, all the pictures that you see in the papers, you know, they've been vetted and they're approved. Uh, I think what people expect from people in the public eye now is, is a much more natural, unmediated persona. Uh, so they expect selfies, they, they expect uh, celebrities to write their own tweets. And I think the royal family should, should be doing that. Is it going to be some sort of a, a watershed, Ingrid? I mean, you know, if you remember all the way back to 1997, the royal family had to change its behaviour in line with the public mood after... Diana died, are they going to have to eventually move with the times here? Well, I think they have moved with the times. I mean, they might not personally tweet, but the palaces have been tweeting for ages. And in fact, I was thinking tonight, the Buckingham Palace were the first people I know that ever had a fax machine. Uh, probably before you were born. But, um, so they, I they don't know what a fax is, I'm sorry. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but I mean, you know, Kensington Palace, I mean, the wedding when William uh, and Kate married, yeah. the, it, tweet, Twitter was wonderful for all of us. We were sitting in front of TV cameras and the, you know, the bridesmaids' dresses were being tweeted and all the information. So the palaces were way ahead. It's just the individuals probably feel, unless they've got a real point, like the Invictus Games, there is no need for them to do it. In, you're, you're absolutely right. In, and in fairness, there is the at British monarchy a uh, Twitter feeder has 659,000 followers clearly a lot of interest but perhaps a little bit dull in comparison to the fake accounts now Elizabeth Windsor has 1.13 million followers very funny it is too it's now been made into a book here's one of the most recent ones Eurovision of a hangover not sure what happened to Camilla she painted on a beard at 4 a.m. rode off on a motorbike <laughs> do you think they read this Ingrid no. The royals read this. <laughs> Harry probably does. Yes. I don't think the others do, absolutely because, not. Because the thing about that Elizabeth Windsor Twitter feed, the, the catchphrase is, is gin o'clock. Anyone who reads it knows that around about this time of the evening, actually, that accounts will tweet gin o'clock. And they're filling in the blanks, aren't they, Luke, that people yeah. want to read Yeah, I mean, I royals. think a lot of those parody accounts are really naff. They're really not that funny. But they're incredibly popular because they're filling that void. Because the royal family aren't on social media, these parody accounts have, have, have come along. Uh, and I think if the royal family actually had their own genuine presence, uh, not just on Twitter, yeah, but on all the funny, platforms, yeah. Instagram as well, you know, that would be great. I think uh, these these slightly lame parody accounts would get less traction because okay. people would have the real thing. Told me it was lame. I thought it was quite amusing. <laughs> uh, Ingrid, you set an example yourself, but you only tweet roughly once a month. <laughs> So your, your 3,000 followers are being let down. They're being very let down, yes. Luke, I find it quite addictive. And I'm not, uh, need to, I'm addicted to reading other people's tweets. You need to get back to it. Unfortunately, Luke has twice as many followers as I do, so we're <laughs> going to leave it there.